It was a compulsion, the way he came down to this stretch of beach whenever he returned to Ravenscar. A compulsion, indeed, but also an overwhelming need to recapture, in his mind's eye, their faces. Their faces not yet cold and waxen in death, but still warm. Neville, his mentor, his partner in so many schemes and adventures. Johnny, his beloved companion of their youth. He had loved them well and true, these Watkins brothers, these cousins of his who had been his allies. At least until a mixture of hurt feelings, overweening ambition, Flaring emotions and dangerous elements had intervened and pried them apart. They had become sworn enemies, much to Edward's chagrin, a pain that had never ceased to trouble him, and now Johnny and Neville were dead. Edward raised his head, looked up at the clear blue sky, blameless, without cloud, a sky that appeared so summer-like and benign on this icy Saturday morning in December. Unexpectedly, his eyes felt moist. He blinked back sudden, incipient tears, shook his head in bemusement, still disbelieving of their tragic end, here on this bit of shingled beach at the edge of the harsh North Sea. How unexpected, how sudden and abrupt it had been. Their motor car had shot off the dangerous winding cliff road, had plunged six hundred feet, rolling down the face of the cliffs, crashing onto the rocks below. Neville and Johnny had been thrown out of the car onto the shingle, and they had died instantly. It had been a terrible and unnecessary accident, one which Edward knew had been caused by Neville's festering anger, frustration, and bad temper. His cousin had been furious with him, and he had been driving far too fast, spurred on by raging emotions he could not always control. If only Neville had been handling the Daimler in a normal way, he and Johnny would be alive today, and perhaps they would have been able to reconcile their differences and their quarrel come to some sort of reproachment. In a sudden flash of vivid memory, Edward saw Johnny standing before him, the serious Johnny, so sincere, so wise, full of the Watkins brilliance. Then the happy-go-lucky Johnny, light-hearted and carefree, his handsome face full of laughter and the pure joy of simply being alive. Edward snapped his eyes shut, remembering so much from the past, memories that haunted him, rushed at him once more, overwhelming in their reality. After a few minutes, Edward opened his eyes and placed his hand on his chest. He could not feel the medallion through the layers of heavy winter clothes, but it was there, laying against his skin, Johnny's medallion. Fourteen years ago, in 1904, Edward had presented a unique medallion of his own design to those men who had helped him in his fight to win back and take over the family business empire. The medallion was a badge of honor, in a sense, to mark their success. It was made of gold and bore the Duravenal family crest, an enameled white rose on one side, the sun in splendor on the other, with the Duravenal motto, Fidelity unto Eternity, embossed around the edge under the enameled white rose. Johnny apparently continued to wear his medallion, despite the differences that had grown between them, this convinced Edward that Johnny Watkins had remained his faithful friend right to the very end, obviously a man torn between diverse family loyalties, torn between his influential older brother Neville and Edward, his favorite first cousin. It was his brother Richard who had discovered the medallion around Johnny's neck after the car crash when he had opened his cousin's collar as he lay on the beach, the life seeping out of him. Needing to determine Johnny's true condition, Richard had loosened his tie, pulled open his shirt, and had instantly noticed the glint of gold on his neck. The night of the accident, Richard had brought Johnny's medallion to Edward, who had later removed his own identical medallion and fastened Johnny's around his neck, and he had worn it ever since, and would until the day he died. The following morning, Edward had given his own medallion to Richard, as a token of his love and regard for his youngest brother. Richard had been thrilled to accept it understanding how meaningful it was.